Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another Tech360 video. Today, I have for you something very special. It is not a review, but we are talking about the EOS R5 and the EOS R experience. So I have the R5 in my hands and I've had it for about two to three weeks now shooting professionally as well as uh, my usual hobby stuff on Instagram. So before we go and talk about more about this camera, I just want to mention that the EOS R5 is a hybrid camera and what I mean by that is it can shoot professional video as well as professional photos. What are some of the key features that I want to emphasize in the introduction of this video? 45 megapixels, 4K up to 120 frames per second which is something very impressive and not a lot of cameras out there can yet do. 8K, 12-bit RAW. I think a lot of other camera manufacturers are starting to get into, but I'm excited to say that the EOS R5 is one to already have this feature and uh, many, many tons of other features that I'm pretty excited to show you about. So without further ado, let's jump straight in into the design and specifications of this brilliant camera. So before I talk about the design and specifications of the EOS R5, I just wanted to briefly mention that before the R5, I was using the Canon 5D Mark IV. So it's sort of relevant in the sense that the 5D was a DSLR and the R5 is just a mirrorless version of it, of course, with the addition of a lot of different functions. So let's talk about the body itself. In terms of weight, you're expecting 650 grams without a battery and a card, 738 grams with a SD card, CF Express as well as a battery. So what are you expecting from this body itself? The body itself feels really great in my hand and I have relatively big hands so uh, it's safe to say that it fits really nicely and I don't feel like it's gonna drop out of my hands anytime. In terms of buttons and controls, you have a small LCD screen on the top where you can show all your menu settings and you can change, you can switch it up on the go as well. You have your standard shutter button, your record button, your dials to change your aperture, shutter speed which are all configurable within the menu system so very intuitive. On the back, you have what is an exciting feature that I'm really uh, looking forward to. I'm safe to say that I was very excited to try out, which is a fully articulating LCD screen, which is also touch screen. So for those of you that, you know, maybe you feel like you're fumbling around with fingers too much when you're shooting on the go, you can also control all the settings within the touch screen itself. In terms of SD card slots and uh, CF Express card slots, you have one of each. So UHS-2 SD card slot as well as a CF Express Type B slot. On the other side, you will be expecting mic, uh, jack input, headphone jack, HDMI as well as a USB-C. And the HDMI port is a micro HDMI port, so just take note of that. I guess the buttons and menu systems are very much similar to the other Canon, professional Canon grade buttons here and then it's and switching from a 5D to over to the R5 was not difficult to get used to at all. So in terms of the battery, the R5 uses a LPE6 NH which is a upgraded version of the LPE6 uh, which the Canon 5D uses. So I was very glad that uh, can I send this out to us so that I, if I ever run out of the batteries that they send me, I have additional batteries uh, that I can use. So uh, let's talk about real world tests and usability because I have had quite a bit of experience with this camera. I've shot uh, some events professionally as well as just shooting some architecture. Uh, but let's go into that in the next segment on this video. Okay, so for this portion of the video, we are going to be testing the autofocus tracking system and see how accurate it is on the R5. So I have actually tested it out, but obviously just telling you guys is not going to do any justice and we're about to put it into action to see how accurate it really is. So I am shooting at 4K, 25 frames and the tracking system is now letting me know to focus on her eye. So the autofocus actually tracks on the eye and it's just flipping back and forth because she's obviously wearing a mask but due to COVID reasons, we have to keep the mask on. Okay, so let's just roll and see what that is like. So I'm just gonna make her walk around and we see if the autofocus actually tracks onto her. Okay, rolling. Okay, it's tracking quite accurately. So she's slightly moving into a darker area. Let's just see if it tracks onto her accurately. I'm moving the camera around and it's still tracking onto her. Oh, it just missed the point, but it catched back on. Okay, come close to me. Okay, stop. Alright, so with that little experiment, you can see that the autofocus system is actually quite accurate and I would say that it only really missed her at one point all the way at the end. 
but it was very quick to catch back uh, onto her and as she was coming closer even though she was wearing a mask it was able to detect where her eye was so definitely not an issue using this for photo as well as video very glad to say that Canon has finally updated their auto focusing system and the R5 is a beast at that uh, but I want to show you guys something interesting so uh, now I'm on mechanical, I'm on electronic first curtain so this is approximately 12 frames a second so I don't know if you can hear it but it's actually really fast and I can hold it without it lagging obviously you have to use a fast cut and about the cut, I forgot to mention so for today's cut, I am using a SanDisk 128 gig, which is very compatible with uh, the Canon EOS R5 I haven't had any issues with this camera so uh, definitely check it out but back to the shooting so I will focus more on the post-production side of things in the later part of the video but for the real world test and usability I would say I haven't really had any issues with the camera so far it is an excellent camera um, no overheating as of yet I've only tested it out uh, I would say like regular temperatures but shooting at close to 10 minutes at a time but no overheating of the camera as of yet so I'm quite uh, glad to say that but um, yeah I guess that's about it for real world tests and maybe we can go ahead and see what else we can shoot around here. Alright, so let's just take a look at the post-processing side of uh, handling the EOS R5 files. I'll first be doing the photos, then I'll move on to the video. So as I've mentioned before, the R5 is a 45 megapixel camera. So with 45 megapixels, you're going to be expecting a lot of information with each image. And the file size that you're expecting to get is around 45 megabytes up to 55 megabytes. So with 45 megapixels, let's just take a look at this first shot. So this is the raw file. And I'm just going to zoom in 300% to just show you guys uh, what the image looks like. So this was shot at f8 with a 24mm lens. So you can see that the edges of the buildings are all relatively sharp. There's no chromatic aberration whatsoever. The buildings are like the logos of the buildings are all still really sharp and you can clearly tell what they are. But let's just take a look at what the edited image looks like. So this is the edited image. So obviously I pushed the colors quite a bit to exaggerate the view, but you can see how from this image that the raw files are really easy to adjust and just pushing it the colors a bit, I would say this is a bit over exaggerated, but you can clearly see that there's no uh, fuzziness or there's no weird color fringing from each color to the next. I would have to say that the EOS R5 raw files are really nice to use. And you know, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that my edits are, sometimes I tend to push it a little bit much in terms of the colors. But having that flexibility with the R5 has made it very fun to edit, I have to say, with the sharpness and you know, just pushing the colors. Obviously in the sky for the before image, you wouldn't see as much orange or even any purples. But just having the flexibility to do that gives you a lot of possibility in the images that you can edit. Apart from this image, let's take a look at something else. So this was shot at Potato Head, a long Chinatown. I'm going to be focusing now on the low light aspect of the R5 as well as the image stabilization. So this was shot without a tripod, so I was uh, holding it with my bare hands and uh, I was shooting at 0.3 seconds. So like I previously mentioned before, the R5 in-body stabilization, you'll be expecting 5 axis. Um, but if you use a IS lens, such as the 1535 RF, which is what I use for this particular shot, you can expect up to 8 axis stabilization. And what that means is that just shooting it at 0.3 seconds handheld, I'm able to get the buildings as well as everything that wasn't moving really, really sharp. I even tested it out and tried to push it even further. I wanted to see how far I could push it just doing it handheld. So this is at 0.5 seconds. So you can see like the people moving, they're all very blurry. But everything else I would say is all still relatively sharp. And uh, that just goes to say how well the stabilization has improved from the DSLR Canon version cameras all the way up to the mirrorless cameras. All right, so the next segment of where the R5 really stands out is being able to shoot 8K RAW at 12-bit. So what 12-bit means is that 
there's a lot more information in the image which allows you to push more in post-production so when you're shooting on a lower bit rate so for example like uh, my 5d4 I can't exactly remember what bit rate it shoots on but when you're shooting on a lower bit rate camera when you're pushing the colors things start to get a little bit fuzzy because there's not that much information from each pixel to each pixel so having been able to shoot at 8k resolution and 12 bit raw gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to color grading this is one that i wanted to emphasize on so having 8k raw and having the 12 bit information in all the pixels and colors so this was obviously not what it looks like but i wanted to show you guys an exaggerated color grade to show you uh to explain to you how much information and how much you can push in terms of the footage when you're getting out of the eos r5 so i would say like the grass and lawn over here on the golf course is actually green but obviously i tried to push it a bit and uh i can even make it slightly i would say it's more orangey to give it slightly like a golden hour feel but with 8K RAW, there's a, there are endless possibilities. I want to say like having edited different kinds of uh, footage from different cameras, this was one that was most easy to manipulate. And uh, just tweaking the colors and trying to just get like different keys out of the different areas was a lot easier to use as compared to other cameras. Yeah, so this is what 8K RAW footage looks like before and after. But yeah, I hope you guys... Uh, took something away from the post-processing side it definitely takes up a lot of processing power and the files that you're getting out of the r5 because it is a professional video and uh, photo camera the file sizes are going to be very very large so just shooting like 12 seconds of 8k raw 12 bit footage can easily take up 4 gigabytes on your card so uh, that's something that you want to consider when you're choosing to shoot on 8k raw Alright, so in summary, the EOS R5 has been a beast of a camera and I'm uh, very glad that Canon was able to send me this as well as all the RF lenses that came along with it. Um, but switching from a DSLR system, which is also Canon, to a EOS R system, the transition was very smooth, very intuitive. The menu system was very much similar to what you expect from a DSLR system, but obviously with a beefed up camera with more functions, you expect a more complicated menu system. But that being said, not difficult to navigate through and if you are also a Canon user before, I would say that it is easy to navigate. But apart from that, you can shoot 20 frames per second still images from RAW and JPEG or even combined, which is something that not I, I would say that even myself on my everyday job basis, I wouldn't have to shoot at 20 frames per second. But for you, if you're shooting sports or vehicle photography, that might be up your alley. Um, but in terms of video, 4K, 10-bit, 422. So up to 120 frames per second. Definitely useful in my line of work when I have to shoot product photography when I need that slow-mo as well as 8K 12-bit RAW. So up till now, I don't exactly have the need to shoot at 8K 12-bit RAW yet, but I would say that having it in my arsenal is not something I will turn down. And um, besides, like I mentioned before, if you're shooting at 8K, you can always uh, crop it into 4K and you know you can move around the frame a lot. So definitely very useful. But all in all, I would definitely recommend you checking out all the other EOS R cameras, not only the R5 because this might be a little bit too professional for you. But uh, if you are willing to spend that money, I would highly recommend you getting your hands on and trying it out. So it's been a bit of a bittersweet experience because I know that after Canon is, uh, after I have to send this camera back, I have to move back to my 5D4 which is, uh, I would say, about time for me to upgrade. 
but uh, fortunately there is another an another video coming soon which uh, you can check out which is also a Canon camera so I think if you are a Canon fanboy you will know which camera I'm talking about but as always I hope you guys enjoyed this video and do uh, drop a subscribe if you haven't already as well as hit that like button and as always if you like this Ryan Mama's perspective I definitely appreciate if you check out my social media as well and that will do it for me and I'll see you guys in the next one